Hey guys, welcome to my review series for Jurassic Park Dangerous Games. This run came out in September of 2011, predating Jurassic World by a good four years. This was the final Jurassic story to keep the park moniker before being rebranded in 2015. So this is going to be the first part in a five issue arc, and with all of that out of the way, let's go ahead and begin. 20 feet above Isla Nublar, a man is thrown from a helicopter. He's gotten himself into a lot of trouble recently. Just three months ago, he'd met a fellow operative in Nicaragua. Apparently, the drug lord Cazares had recently bought a certain infamous island off of the coast of Costa Rica. And now, he was plummeting down to that very island. The man swam his way out of the cold water that he'd been thrust into, and listened to the other man responsible for this treatment taunt him. He'd been working for the CIA undercover for one of Kazara's projects. Before that all turned south. And now the man who'd thrown him into this lake threw him a parting gift too. A knife. He'd better not lose it. He remembered flying out to the island, tirelessly waiting for whatever fate may be in store for him. They moved him at gunpoint to greet the man that had thrown him from the chopper. The first thing he said to him was welcome to Jurassic Park. Now alone, with nothing but a small knife to give him protection, he ran out in the wild jungles of this island, hoping against hope for the best. A voice called out to him from the helicopter, 24 hours, Espinosa. After that, you're all mine, if the lizards don't get to you first. This was definitely not a good day. Earlier, he'd been ushered into the opposite side of a perimeter fence in an old beat-up jeep. The drug lords must have made this place their own once they bought it. Inside, he could see giant dinosaurs being tased and pushed into small holding pits. He knew he was in for a rude awakening. A small furry head gazed happily at the little fish that it was being offered, before snapping its jaws shut around the minnow. It was an Archaeopteryx, friend to none other than Kazaris himself. The dark drug lord that now sat amongst a throne made from the destroyed bones of the Rex skeleton that used to be on display in the visitor center. He welcomed Agent Espinosa to his humble kingdom, before asking if the man knew why he was being brought here in front of him today. Espinosa gave a mocking response. Cazares explains that this isn't going to fly. You see, he is a predator. He worked his way up through the cartels by eating the weaker dealers and becoming the biggest, strongest, and meanest in the business. How could he resist coming to an island filled with other predators like himself? Though as brutal as he may be, he does not have a taste for captive prey, and instead wishes to give Espinosa a fighting chance. He will have a 24-hour head start, but after that time is up, Tiburon, his right-hand man, will find him, and he will kill him. After this little encounter, Espinosa was escorted out of the building, and that's how he ended up here, in the jungles of Nublar with nothing but a knife for protection. He'd better find a good place to sleep. Tomorrow is going to be one hell of a day. At dawn, Espinosa awoke to the sound of crunching and cracking beneath him. A stegosaur family was lumbering about the jungle under the tree he'd chosen to sleep in. He couldn't remember if these animals were friendly or not, but after they decided not to attack, he felt it was best to follow them wherever they chose to travel. Tagging along with some spiky friends would come in handy if he ever ran into a T-Rex. Espinosa followed them through the foliage, until they came across a great lake that many other animals had come to drink from. It's just too bad the agent didn't get a chance to see what was lurking at the edge of the trees. It had been a while since he'd eaten. Maybe he could take one of the dinosaurs down near the water. It was a good idea, but suddenly interrupted. Now the stalker strikes. The herbivores ran instantly, terrified by whatever predator had made its way to their sanctuary. One of the animals runs into a Parasaurolophus, catching it off guard. The large quilled theropod chooses a victim, while Espinosa and all of the other creatures continue to run. Whatever the animal was, he needed to get as far away as possible. So he continued to flee, deeper and deeper into the jungle, until he heard a loud sound. It wasn't too long until he came across the bellowing of the parasaur he'd seen earlier. It had been injured from the stampede and was bleeding out in the forest. The agent grew hungrier after the tiring trek away from the lake, so Espinosa capitalized off of the situation. He didn't have much time before the drug kings would come after him. He needed as much food as he could get for the energy he'd no doubt expend later. Unfortunately, it would appear as if his kill has drawn the attention of another. An Allosaurus now greeted him from the right. The agent ran. He tried to get as far away as possible before... He fell and hit his head. 
unconscious and laying helpless in front of the terrible jaws that lower themselves behind him, until suddenly a fully feathered creature leaps onto the Allosaur, and that attack is followed by another. The predator turns and roars just before hitting its own massive head on the surface of a large rock. The creature falls, and a small pack of raptors look out over their new prey. A woman's voice calls out from the bushes. Looks like we have a new visitor. Well, I can honestly say this is definitely one of the most original Jurassic Park stories that I've come across so far. Personally, I've never liked the whole drug lord angle that the comics have tried to go down in the past, and I still think it doesn't work here very well. It just feels kind of cheap compared to what Jurassic is capable of doing in my own opinion. That being said, the anime-inspired art style of this series is a fun and fresh new look for a property that has historically been given pretty bad artwork in its comic books. I'd prefer realistic looking humans and dinosaurs, but hey, I'm not complaining. I gotta say, the big takeaway that I have from this issue is the incorporation of feathered dinosaurs. I like it, and I think they look pretty cool. I really wish the comic would explain what some of them are, but I'm not really even sure if the creators are aware of what they drew, so all in all I gotta say, I'm enjoying what they've shown. I don't know what's in store for the future, but I can't wait to see where the story takes us. Now before I go, I want to thank my game wardens as well as all of my engine executives. I'd also like to thank all of my park workers and engine hunters as well. It means the world to me that you guys continue to support what I do, and I seriously am extremely thankful for all of you just watching the videos. It honestly means the world. Now, I'd like to thank all of you for watching the video, and hope that you all enjoyed today's content. If you feel like I deserve it, I'd appreciate the like, and hope that you'll consider subscribing if you are interested in hearing from me again. I'll see you all in the next video, guys. And as always, take it easy.